wonder if when people like press the button to like watch this show and they only see us here, like I wonder if they think like it's a substitute teacher. Like, oh no, Purvis, skip. Yeah, no, Purvis, skip. It's like, oh, we're gonna get in the comments and like act wild. No one comments on our shit, but it's like, point unproven. Purvis isn't here. It's me and Jasper, guys, and we're doing something fun today. We are. Jasper, run through it. We are doing a rapid fire top three albums that we are listening to right now. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah no was... news. No bullshit. No releases. Yeah, we're doing. What this. are we listening to? You'll right probably now? see like right here, like right, right there. Like this is a much shorter episode, and yeah, we just thought Purvis isn't in town. Uh, instead of going through all the hoops of coming up with a like a topic that doesn't feel exclusionary, we're just gonna do this. And bucket head, cringe or based? Uh, based. based. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> episode yeah. over. Yeah, episode over. Exclusionary. Let's well, go. That's amazing you say that because all three of my albums are buckethead albums. Ah, uh, damn, to, me too. Back welcome, to the drawing board. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to Buckethead Land, uh, <laughs> raised in the chicken coop, and third one. Like, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, all right. So, without further ado, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah. Are we gonna do our three each, or are we gonna do back and forth? Round robin. Let's. We should always do round I think we robin. Do, yeah. Because like it's just. Makes for it's time. just better. It's, it's just, just better, better for. I mean, I guess it's you know if you're going for efficient. If this was a newsletter, but I'm like, not monologuing. Yeah, no, it's not monologuing exactly. And also, yeah. like we want to talk about it. So, for sure. So, I'm sticking with my theme from last week of Elliot Moss representation. Okay. Uh, my first pick is his Boomerang EP from 2017. Yeah. And. It's just seven songs. Some of them are a little longer than others, but it's super nice, sweet project with actually like probably three or four, I would say really kind of bigger hits off of it. And yeah, just a big fan. I've been listening to his stuff for a while and really kind of getting into it more now. So that's my first one. So Elliot Moss, what's the project called? Boomerang. Boomerang. That's the project and the song. So what kind of genre is this? He's, it's hard for me to describe. He's like if James Blake were more ele- like electronic music focused, like, okay, yeah. st- like more like synthy. James Blake was always just a little whiny for me. And it was just, like, yeah, oh, he's let, he's less of that. It's a little bit popular in the delivery on some pro on some of them, but then also has like more of like a kind of get up and go type of beat or instrumentation to it, as opposed to something more like laid back and slow. Yeah. Listen to the song 99. That'd be yeah. my like. Yeah, like, I would say like, what are your recommend? Because we're doing recommendations from these albums. So like, what, we are. Are, what are the songs that you would so, pull out? Yeah. The two that I would pull out as like recommendations off of this project are 99 and Closed Loop in that order. Those are the ones that I actually made it into my likes that I listen to on repeat on my like like shuffle. Closed 99 Loop. Hits. 99 Hits. Oh, so oh, it's a short project too. It is. Yeah. Yeah. 25 minutes. Okay. I'm going to save this EP and listen to it when I walk to get food later. All right. So I'm going to actually pick up the same thing because I recommended a song from this album last week mm-hmm. uh, because I think it is my album of the year. It I have not been blown away by an album like this in a very long time. Scaring the hose, baby. Not scaring the hose. That's <laughs> album of all time. There you uh, go. That's the greatest album ever <laughs> made by Man or Dolphin. You uh, like it so much, I have to go back and re-listen dude, to it. It's I'm gonna so do it. good. The thing is that, like, the thing about scaring the hose, we're gonna do a small scaring the hose because uh, I'm still <laughs> listening to it like a lot. Like, right. uh, <laughs> but like, it, you gotta wrap your head around it a little bit. Yeah. But once you do, it's like it's very approachable. Like. I do not think this is anywhere near as experimental or abrasive as like Death Grips. You know, I think this is mu- granted like it's on the sc- scale towards it, like away from mm. like Migos, but like it's I don't think it's all that out there. Once you kind of familiarize yourself with the sounds, the cadence of it, the mixing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, the album I'm recommending is uh, But Here We Are by the Foo Fighters. 
Uh, yep. This has just dominated my listening because just like that, you know, we always talk about like the, not we, like we, the royal we, the culture. We always talk about like the idea of that, like you either got to choose substance or style. Something's either going to be fun to listen to or it's going to be like, have meaning and that's just a false dichotomy that i'm trying to like pull myself away from and i really think this album is like a great great example of it because the foo fighters have been like for i call it just like playing the hits with their releases for the last few years everything sounds like my hero and this album is not an exception to that like sonically this is very much like traditional in the vein yeah yeah in the vein like aesthetically but just the the way it captures like the themes that it's dealing with of like loss and death and feels like the ex- exorcism of those emotions mm-hmm. it's something man it's something it's crazy to hear a song that is just so emo- like uh that is just so em- emotionally potent but also like we'll play at riot fest we'll play at Wrigley Field we'll play in Soldier Field right yeah those are kind of hard to come upon you know, mm-hmm. I, you know, and really this is, and one of the songs that I want to talk about, but I don't want to recommend because I think it's an, an awful pull from the album. It's an, one of the best closers of all time, but rest, uh, about laying the people you love to rest. It's, it's heartbreaking and it comes to this emotional climax and it really is just the best closing track I've heard since mortal man off to Pippa butterfly, you know, wow. it's, it's incredible and the teacher is the best 10 minute long song since pyramids i'd say like and something you know when you when you're not as dynamic as someone like a frank ocean those 10 minute songs are like difficult to do and pyramids is really two songs you know because of the beat oh totally there's the break yeah yeah, the beat switch in the middle and like don't get me wrong like i'm not going to say like a beat switch is like easy to do it's not but I do think like composing a song like The Teacher, which is 10 minutes long and doesn't do that. It just builds and builds and builds like a traditional song, but just scaled out for 10 minutes. Like that's a lot harder, though. I have a put you on the spot type of question right now. That what has a better for. what has a better beat switch? Pyramids or Knights? Uh, Knights. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I- I lean towards pyramids, but I just I, I personally really like sonically the way it's both sides sound so much. Yeah, I agree, and I I like that the beat switch in pyramids is meant to be narrative evocating, like it's supposed mm-hmm. to represent the transcendence of the soul from like the the, the first part to the second part. Mm-hmm. But I think the knights one is just like so sonically well well put together it is it's, you know? it's cool and, and it's yeah. placed on the album you know for sure and uh so yeah like being able to make a song without a beat switch without a key change that's that's hard and like i really respect them for it and the other thing is that it's just it, it's an intensely listenable album like it's not an album that feels heavy to get back to you know mm-hmm. so yeah no i highly recommend it i think it's my album of the year uh I'll know that in a week because, like, right. Michael's the big – Michael coming out tomorrow is uh, going to be the big <clears throat> test to that. But beyond that, like, look, I love Travis Scott. I love uh, Chance the Rapper. I th- I'm excited for their projects to drop. But I just don't think they're going to be able to I, – I, I don't know if they've had – if they're the kind of artists that are going to put, like, that level of vulnerability in the project, which I think is necessary to get here. I feel like we see glimmers with Travis in a way that's very... Yeah, aggressively um, disagree. Well, no. I mean, look at songs like Coffee Bean or Impossible or like... I, there, I are tra- think, there are tracks throughout that ha- have hints of it, but it's never something that's openly communicated. I think hints is generous. I think scratches, maybe. And like... You don't, th- you don't think Coffee Bean touches on some of those things? Well, I'm not Vulner- saying... That vulnerabilities? I, I, I don't think to the same scale, no. No, of course not. But that's what I'm saying. It's like yeah. it's hints of it. It's not a project that is doing that. It's yeah. like well, it is I mean, Astro World does have a theme, but yeah. like, no, I actually think that's one of the things Travis Scott really has to get better at is like being vulnerable. I think he has built a persona around himself, 
And like, yeah. look, the persona works, but he wears it like a suit of armor. And that's a ceiling on like what you can create. Well, you know? now you can argue that he doesn't need to to like mm-hmm. make the stuff that he's clearly interested in. And that's fair. Yeah. But I would say like that still doesn't mean that it's going to get to this level. Like if I'm just comparing albums like in total emotional impact. Sure. And that's fair. I just feel like with everything that's happened and how long it's been since the last project, I saw this online the other day. Al Faro to Astroworld was a period of five years. So he dropped every single project he's ever made solo in five years. Yeah. And it's been five years since 2018. So it's yeah. literally like a gap of the same space till the next project. So he's definitely had time to, I, to marinate. And also with everything that happened with Astroworld in 2020. I, know, I just it, think I just think that's a very large and gracious assumption. You know, no, like, I, I'm yeah. not assuming it. I'm just yeah. saying it's like if well, we're gonna get if we're gonna get that from him, I think now would be the time yeah, relative to the sure. rest of his discography. But like Utopia has been teased and developed, and like yeah, it seems like the concept for the Utopia predates the Asher World incident. So like I I agree, but like I I don't know. Like I don't know if that that's I don't, true. I don't know if that's a reasonable expectation from Travis Scott. I guess we'll find out if he yeah. if he rewrites if they make another documentary. We'll find out if yeah. anything's been re- rewritten or changed around, and and we'll see what happens yeah. with that. We're gonna we're gonna cut Travis Scott talk now because it's gonna come back up again, and I think we talk about him way too much. Uh, it will. Yeah, go on. All right, uh, my my second pick. You really gotta get better at having these ready. Ram ten, baby. Yeah. Ram 10. It's it's just on rotation, especially the extra stuff from it. I'm I, I'm listening to Infinity repeating, like repeating. Yeah. I really, really like that track. And then other standouts are like Horizon, which is which did release on the Japanese version of the original, yeah. but not in the US. And then yeah, I mean, there's just like so much to like. And I think about it. I would love to have seen some of the songs on the original version that we got swapped out for some of these extras. Really? Yeah, I am not the biggest fan of Lose Yourself to Dance. And I'm also not a big fan of um, Doing It Right. And I'm not, I'm not th- a big fan of Doing I like Lose Yourself to Dance, but I'm, I'm with you on Doing It Right. I think if we could have swapped Horizon for Lose Yourself to Dance and have an instrumental after Instant Crush... That'd be kind of sick. And then if we put Infinity Repeating where Doing It Right went after Fragments of Time, that would be something special. Yeah. But but yeah, no, this is my my definitely my pick for number two. And I I really hope we do a deep dive on this at some point. So just because. So then Purvis has to listen to it because yeah. well, it's worth it, it. it. I mean, Random Access Memories really is like a stupendous album. Yeah. It, and it really is like the flag bearer for Daft Punk's legacy, which is massive. Yeah. Uh that being said, like, you know, we've we've talked Daft Punk to death. Um I uh, my favorite project by them is still the Tron soundtrack. And I know it's like a cop out answer. Uh, but I really haven't dived into the the anniversary just because like we'll get into the albums I'm talking about. Like they've kind of dominated my listening for like the past like Mm-hmm. You know, the Foo Fighters is the newest thing I'm recommending. Uh, so they've dominated my listening for like the last month. So yeah. like it's it's something. But uh, let, let me ask you, like, is there so considering the fact that like a new album is like off the table or let's just assume that it is sort of for, for, now, for the yeah. sake of this question, you know, mm-hmm. seeing as. What more do you want from Daft Punk? Because I know the answer has to be something. And I think that's reasonable. Uh, yeah. But, like, what is something that excites you about the future of Daft Punk? Because, like, the end is really just the beginning when you're t- talking about culture. Yeah, I mean, I think something that I would be really excited by for them at this point would be not only to continue to release content and become even just a little bit more public, not with themselves as people, but with the process. And they're doing that a lot right now. We're seeing... Yeah, like, like what these... are they doing now? They're So they're dropping... They've been dropping all this stuff. They made a Discord. They made, like... They're much more present on Instagram, like their social media team. Basically, they're putting out all this behind-the-scenes content from the making of RAM, including uh, interviews with people like Julian Casablancas, no. um, 
of Paul Simon, like people who were collaborators on this project and they're doing it in such a way that is, it feels like breadcrumbs, which is really kind of cool. You get like a little five, 10 minute thing here. They've got like an interview with Giorgio that they put up the other day, stuff like that. And it's just yeah. like, it really makes you look forward to content about something that came out 10 years ago, which is like yeah. pretty, pretty interesting. Um, I'd love to see them kind of like basically extract their whole process and like kind of lay it out timeline wise as far as like how they make a project and then who knows maybe down the line they have some kind of reunion or there's new stuff or whatever but the thing is like ram is it is so interesting musically because it really combines everything they did before with all of their influences and i'd love to see more in that vein because i don't think we're ever going to get anything like discovery or homework again and i wouldn't blame them for for not doing anything like that so uh, yeah all right. Do you have two you want to recommend? And then I didn't do two from the Food Fighters, so I'll do that when you're done. So, yeah, I mean, my two are going to be Horizon just because it's like a super interesting, hard hitting instrumental piece. Like it, it starts off very peaceful, but then the bass comes in and it feels like very intense. And I really like that. Yeah. Um, interesting thing, the Horizon Overture straight up sounds like something out of Halo. Yeah. There's like a pre like a prelude instrumental at the beginning it sounds like a halo track like it could be in in a halo game um and then my other recommendation obviously because i've, I've done it once so i'll do it again is infinity repeating because that yeah. song is beautiful um the one that you're gonna like off of these extras though is prime prime is literally it it, it sounds like it was cut off the tron soundtrack it's yeah. it's exactly the same it's from 2012 too so it, it lines up with the timeline interesting all right that's that's fun. I'll have to listen to that. I gotta mm -hmm. finally jump in. I have it saved in my library, but I haven't just had the time. Uh, you gotta lose yourself to dance. Come on. Yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, from but here we are, the Foo Fighters album. I'm gonna be recommending mm -hmm. uh, "Under You" and mm -hmm. "The Glass." The Glass is going to be a live performance staple for a generation. It's incredible. Damn, I have to uh, listen to this. Yeah. No, it's a fantastic album. Also, uh, I, I really like how the, it's this is like the anti Donda when you look at the album artwork. Yeah, it kind <laughs> of is. Uh, so I really want my second album. I really mm -hmm. kind of wanted to cheat and start listening to rap music, which was Killer Mike's last solo project. But I feel like I talked Killer Mike to death, so I'm going with a different direction. But I do mm -hmm. want to bring that up because Michael drops tomorrow, and that was very heavily in my rotation. But this one I've been listening to for the last month. It missed me in 2020 when it came out, mm -hmm. and I'm you know I've only recently gotten into this artist mostly thanks to Purvis, uh, but I'm recommending the Price of Tea in China, the uh, collab between oh, yeah. Boldy James and the Alchemist. Yeah, yeah, this is the smoothest record uh, album I've heard in forever, right? Like the transitions between the songs are flawless mm -hmm. like and first off i just love the aesthetic both of these artists have you know this is before boldy uh signed to griselda this was released under alc the uh the alchemist's label mm -hmm. um and yeah alchemist s tier producer honestly probably top two right now for me like top three uh and I really just love his album centric approach to producing, you know, mm -hmm. and seeing everything as like part of a piece, you know, uh, and it just lets everything just like move like and flow so well, like the transition between uh, surf and turf and run ins is sublime, like in that it like almost doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, Boldy James is, you know, he's currently signed to Griselda. He's very much in that street rap, gangster rap, luxury rap kind of lane. Mm -hmm. uh, less on the luxury rap side than West Side Gun and Conway. You know, he's very much like a, a little bit more talented uh, Benny the Butcher, in my opinion. Gotcha. Uh, and also, I, I have a thing for titles, right? I really love pieces of work that have, like, really, like intriguing and like eye-catching titles uh and this is the best title for a project i've ever seen like 
I, I just think it like exists in like such a space in my brain now. But yeah, no, I could not recommend this project anymore. Uh, and the out al- like the songs I want to recommend are going to be Run Ins and uh, Scrape the Bowl. I saw Scrape the Bowl on the list, and I immediately thought of Scrape It Off, like Pusha yeah. T. Yeah, yeah, but uh, this is a very different vibe. I'm this sure. Is, yeah. yeah, this is. I don't doubt that. Yeah, like, <laughs> like if Pusha T is Goodfellas, this is The Wire. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> which That's hey, perfect. I like that. I like that about Pusha T. I like these <clears throat> Goodfellas. Yeah, you know, uh, but yeah, no, and and I gotta say, my my, you bring up Pusha T, oh. I would cut off my right arm to to get a, a full collab between the Alchemist and Pusha T. That would just oh mm. perfect, just absolutely perfect. Yeah, I can see that <coughs> being po- po- potent. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> all right. So my last one. I've been on the Travis kick. We said we were going to talk about Travis later. Oh, mine is going to be related to Travis, but it's not Travis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the, the I, other I one gotta I be honest. I gotta be honest. I'm getting so burnt out on Travis Scott. Like, yeah. The run up to Utopia. I'm kind of afraid I'm getting primed to hate Utopia. I don't know, dude. I listened to. I've been listening to Rodeo recently. Yeah. And it hits. It yeah. Still hits. And that's my third pick. Um, I mean, certified classic. What do you want, right? It's like even. You, you get through it, and you're like, oh, it's over already. That's how I feel about it. It's just like, oh, I'm. Let me go back because yeah. it's just like it just goes down smooth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was just that was a moment in the culture, right? Uh, sure. Yeah. And Rodeo. I love Rodeo. I do. I do think that's his classic uh, at this point in time. Uh, I don't know, though. Like, the thing is, I've I've literally there has never been a time I listened to Rodeo and didn't like enjoy it like a lot. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. however, I would not describe it as like a breezy listen. Uh, to me, I listened to it today when I was commuting and just it seemed like it went by quick. But maybe yeah. it's because I was really bored on the train. I don't yeah. know. Like to me, it just like it, it to me. I think a lot of Travis's work is very dense, and like oh, yeah. that's not necessarily a bad thing. I like dense, uh, and like the intricacies of his production are things I really are the thing I ultimately come back to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think like that's on like a different level on rodeo. I think uh, Asher world has a little bit more of a concept. Uh, and the, the production is still plenty good, you know? Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I do think this one is, is what I think is Travis Scott's classic. But at the same time, like, I've just been burning out on Travis Scott. You know, I just think I think he has a very idiosyncratic sound. And it's just like, you know, if you're not in the mood for that one thing, it's like going to a seafood restaurant, you know, yeah. go to a seafood restaurant. You better want seafood. Yeah. And the other thing is that, like, you know, maybe it's just because I've been talking to people who are like a little bit older now about like hip-hop and everything but Mm. like i think i'm thinking he has less of a cultural impact than we think he does i just because like i don't know man like he does doesn't get the shine in other circles and like look i i like him a lot but like sometimes that shit comes off for me like i've i'm famously i famously switch very hard on birds all the time like yeah, there, I get you. Are, there are songs on birds I really like, but mm, sometimes it's just very vapid. I got you. Yeah. I mean, the whole cultural thing, I'm not going to get into it. Cause like, we'll be here an hour and a half, but yeah. um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like there's a population that he is. It's just like rabid for that style. Sure. And I, th- I think there's been time where some of that shine has, has slipped or evaporated a little bit just as, rage as and like that sound has become more mainstream but i think that with the new project releasing i think there's a chance to recapture some of that and, and kind of build it back up but we'll see sure and like look i i don't think it's possible that this is a bad album just because like i mm-hmm. think he's a workman in many ways yeah. uh but at the same time like i wonder like is i think this is ultimately the biggest test for travis 
Yeah, uh, I I do think the 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 classic nature of Asher World and or Rodeo is kind of set in stone. Mm-hmm. But I think Utopia is kind of a make or break moment for him, you know. Yeah, and you know I hope he delivers. Me too. I mean, there's been so much to like so far. I just I I, I don't see him fumbling, especially with Mike Dean. But yeah. we'll see. Yeah. All um, right. My two picks, song-wise, are going to be... I decided to go with lesser-known stuff, because obviously everybody knows this album, right? Or, like, lesser-listened. So I'm picking uh, Wasted, and I'm going to pick uh, I Can Tell. Those are both tracks that I think are not necessarily the standouts, but also maybe a little overlooked as far as, like, where they sit in the discography. Yeah. I... I, agree. I like I, I, I like I can tell a lot. That's I like that song. Yeah, I I don't know if I could hum I can tell, but I It's I, just that it's it's overshadowed by Apple Pie cuz Apple Pie no, comes right afterwards. No. Um one other thing I did want to mention. I know that we talked about like narrative and theme across albums. I almost just you know being of overactive imagination, I almost think of this as kind of like a um a themed or like a concept album in the sense that oh, it's this, like yeah this one definitely has a theme like there's yeah, yeah. there's definitely a theme to this it's the, very much the theme's there life. yeah like finding yourself and youth and indecision and all that stuff but i like the idea that like the entire album plays out as like the sun's going down it's becoming like nighttime and he's going out for this like wild night and then he has like all these challenges and self moments of self-discovery. And then by the time Apple Pie comes around, it's like the sun's coming up and he's like figured things out a little bit because he's had experiences. That's like my my kind of like thinking on it. But my my thing, and like I think this is a great example of like why I think like maybe Travis Scott like just doesn't have all the shine, is like, mm-hmm. yeah, I've projected that same story onto a million albums. I projected sure, it yeah. onto Indicud, I projected yeah. it onto House of Balloons. You know, I think that's uh, and I'm not saying that's not there. You know, I definitely think that theme is there, but I think that is uh, thin and like bordering on cliche. No, it definitely is. I agree. I I agree with you, but that's what I I can't help but think of it when I do hear this. Yeah, totally. Like when I hear when I hear 90210 immediately followed by frustration on Pray for Love and then like the party repeats on Nightcrawler. Like all of that stringing together tells the story to me of like sad, angry, you know, work it off in some way or like get through it in some way. And then you get to the things like antidote and it's like, that's the climax. And then it kind of yeah. calms down and it's like, okay, the night's starting to wrap up. But yeah. yeah. All right. Now this is the one, believe it or not, this is the one where I actually have something to say about Travis Scott. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's actually not hip hop. It's uh, are you familiar with hardcore? Yeah. Okay, so I'm recommending Turd Styles Glow On, their 2021 album. Uh, this has dominated, completely dominated my listening for the last month. Another just fucking white album cover. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, Glow On is Clouds. True. I see it. It's just very yeah, bright. Yeah. It's very bright. Uh, and the thing, fuck, dude, I could talk about this album so much. It is one of the best, like, opening string of songs I've ever heard. Uh, now, I'll say this. I'm not the biggest, like, hardcore fan. Like, I talk yeah. about what genres I listen to. Mm-hmm. I gravitate far more towards, like, pop punk, alternative metal, uh, in the rock sphere. And that's to say nothing of R&B and hip-hop. Uh, and, like, retro wave and synth wave and things I listen to a lot more. Uh, but I have a, like a long history with the hardcore scene. Cause like, I was like very in the local scene, like in mm-hmm. the suburbs fr- from like 2009 to like 2012. And you know, it, it, it kind of brought me back to our conversation last week about pop and, you know, we were circling around this idea and I think I kind of like boiled it down like with language and like pop is a genre, but it's also a form. Yeah. It's also like a, a thing, any kind of music, a form, any kind of music can take, but yep. it is also its own genre. Hardcore, yes. very similar. It's mm-hmm. its own genre, but it's also a form, a lot you of You can other, attribute yeah, the elements. Yeah. Yeah. Like metalcore, 
mm-hmm. you know, like uh, anything core, yeah, anything core, you know. Uh, so, and the thing I like about this is like this is very much uh, like traditional hardcore, like yeah. in the composition, the lyrics, the performance. It's very traditional hardcore. It's not like a huge. Uh, it, it's an evolution. It's not a revolution. Where mm-hmm. the revolution comes in is in the production. Yeah. Because this is produced like a Travis Scott album, right? It is, uh, it feels in conversation with a lot of psychedelic music that comes out recently. And mm-hmm. I mean, all psychedelic music. You know, it feels in conversation with uh, Tame Impala, Thundercat, and Travis Scott all at once. I mean, like, their big song on this has ad libs. And. The thing I think is interesting is one I didn't would not have thought to like put psychedelic, especially like psychedelic hip hoppy kind of like sounds yeah. or hardcore. But you you know you take the gang vocals that are like really typical for hardcore music. You take a lot of the elements that are very typical for hardcore music, and they just sing. They sound like instantly recognizable, but also mm-hmm. unlike anything I've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, this is what I want the future of rock music to sound like. This is, I I think like this is a a path forward for the genre. You know? After thirty years of nothing, let's go. I don't know about thirty years, but but twenty, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, since Nirvana, like that seemed like the last. Step oh forward. no, you don't think like, look, you don't have to like new metal to say that like new metal was a moment, like. No, I agree, but I wouldn't consider new metal to be part of the rock genre by Mm. and large. I would consider it to be metal, which I I do just like I I keep a distinction between them. I don't know. Like, yes, you're right, but at the same time, like hardcore has always been popular. Like that's the thing we talk about. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah, we talk about like how rock has got has declined, which is true. Like that's absolutely accurate. But like pop punk and hardcore have not. Like they are as popular as ever. They don't sound. Well, hardcore still kind of does, but like pop punk doesn't sound anything like, you know, the early Fall Out Boy stuff I was listening to when I was no, definitely the not. target audience. Uh, but I mean, look, look still... at I Write Sins, Not Tragedies versus like literally anything new yeah. by Panic and Disco, and it tells yeah. the story of that happening. Yeah, you know, and yeah. like the other thing is that like it's just nice to have like a exciting voice in uh, totally in uh, rock music, and the other thing. The other point I wanted to bring up, and specifically with you, is uh, I think that one of the things Turnstile understands, that a lot of artists understand, but not a lot of rock artists understand, is mm-hmm. the value in aesthetics. Yes. Everything is shot so well. Everything feels of a piece. You know, I'm just looking through their albums right now, and you see it. It's like dripped in it. It's like the most polished production yeah. on like one of and these every, hardcore bands I've ever seen. Yeah, and Glow On, like watch the video for Holiday. It is mm-hmm. simultaneously like the most DIY and the most cinematic thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like how they have songs that are named basically the same as like a couple other artists. Yeah. So here's another Travis Scott tie-in for you. Who's got the better "Don't Play"? Turnstile or Travis Scott? Turnstile. Not even a question. Damn. Better Not than, even a question. Better than Travis Scott featuring Big Sean. Yeah. Did wow. they have a breakdown in the "Don't Play" breakdown? Insane. <laughs> <laughs> insane and also yeah. like i just you know there's the context to it you know like the the ref the refreshingness of this is yeah. just out there yeah uh and like that run from mystery to alien love call is mm-hmm. obscene like they're the opening run on this album is longer than most al- like a lot of albums and it's obscenely tight. It's obscenely well produced. Uh, extremely well written. Every line of these songs are hooks somehow. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's insane. And like so, yeah. What I'm hearing is that this is for hardcore. What Daughters is for like noise rock, where yeah. it's like kind of like I, I'm not familiar not... with noise rock and Daughters. So I can't. Oh, well, I thought we talked about Daughters before. That album, You Won't Get What You Want, is like insane. You should check that. That's my other like fourth recommendation, I guess. Um, Just wild shit. But it's like, oh, well, this actually kind of changes up the formula a little bit. Well, you know, like this. It's kind of like saying 
It's like Kid Cudi's relationship to hip hop, right? If you go into yeah. Kid Cudi listening to Man on the Moon and then you mm-hmm. go back and listen to Wu Tang, you can see the common line. You're like, yeah. this is clearly the same genre, but it's mm-hmm. also like completely different sonically the way it the way it's produced, the way it yep. hits your ears, and these ethos behind it, right? And like all the creative stuff in the background that like you mm-hmm. know the listener doesn't necessarily see. Uh, sure. I, I would just compare it more to that. But yeah, okay, no, yeah, this, that makes sense. This album is incredible. I, I'll be honest; I have not even had the time to like tear myself away from this and the other two albums I've been listening to mm-hmm. uh, to go back and listen to their old stuff. I'm familiar with it, but I mm-hmm. haven't even like given it its due because of how excellent this album is. This would have been my. I, I listened to this when it came out, and it just didn't click. And now it's just like everything I've ever wanted. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that's high praise, so I'm yeah. going to have to listen to this one. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, if this is probably the more fun listen than the Foo Fighters one, mm-hmm. uh, but it's also longer. Fair. And the two songs I'm going to recommend are uh, uh, Holiday, which is the big hit. Like, that's, like, their big single. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Fly Again. Fly Again is two and a half minutes long, and you have all you need. Like, you can listen to that, and you can be like, you'll know like if you like this album or not right yeah it's completely representative of the entire album i'd say no i mean yeah that makes sense it's funny that the the breakout hit is holiday i think of another band who has a breakout hit holiday as well yeah green day yep yeah yeah no they have a lot of them but you know you know what song title i've never seen anyone else have uh let me guess Fucking Lonely Desires or Alien Love Call. I was gonna, one. I was going to say Underwater Boy. I like that one too. Dude, the video <laughs> for Underwater Boy is like a... It's a fucking Adult Swim Tussie Nightmare. It's amazing. Oh, God. But yeah. All right. This was our quick, rapid fire three albums. We made it. Yeah, it was still 35 minutes. That's uh, not bad. That's not bad. Compared, no. to, compared to two hours? I would say. I would agree. But... uh. That's great. I'm going to listen to that Elliot person. I'm going to listen to them right now. Elliot Moss. Elliot he Moss. Has the, he has the sauce. Yeah, no, I got to listen to that. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good night. See you next week. Purvis will be back. And then, uh, then we have a fun run. Yes, we do. We have a lot between now and then. Much will happen. Much, we got much will recaps happen. after recaps after recaps. Yes. And uh, and be prepared, Jasper. I've already talked to Purvis. Next week, we're doing a Michael review. Oh, shit. Let's go. Yeah. Wait. Uh, Mm. Are we, though? With Don Tolliver? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we could do. I'm not. I'm, if we, yeah, we're not missing Michael. I'm sorry. Like You're right. You're yeah, right. That's favorite fair. rapper That's of fair. all time. I'm sorry. I'm, good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>